welcome back to our study on the letters of John. We're in the first letter, 1 John, and uh, on the Friday we did the first chapter, the theme being walking in the light, uh, the challenge from John to the early church undergoing persecution and heresy and temptation was for Christians to walk in the light, show that who you are, that you're different, you're not the same as everybody else. Today we go from chapter 2. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. So he wants believers to walk in the light and he's conceded that Christians do sin. He says, if anyone says you don't sin and without sin, you're a liar. And so again, he says, I write this that you may not sin, but if you do, remember this. There's always forgiveness. You're not crippled by your guilt. You can always get up. And the person who is going to speak in our defense is Jesus Christ, the righteous one. So Jesus in heaven before the Father is pleading his blood, his death for us on our behalf. Like a great advocate, he's saying to the judge, this person is guilty, but I have paid their debt. So he's speaking on our behalf. He's interceding on our behalf is the scriptural term. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. So Jesus is interceding for us on our behalf, but he's the one who's actually paid the debt. He's atoned for our sins. And so in this situation, Jesus has, by his blood, paid for our sin, uh, paid our price, paid our penalty. And not only for ours, John says, but for all the, of humanity, anyone who believes in him and trusts in him and gives a heart to him, his sins are atoned for. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. So there's a clear indication of whether a man or woman is one of his. There's always the challenge to a group of so-called believers the question is who's real who's not who's wheat who's weeds and i'm mindful of the verses which say in the last days many will fall away many will be led astray the love of many will grow cold i'm mindful of the verse that says that people will come on the last day and say lord lord i knew you and you'll say i don't know who you are there's always that danger there's that great divide even among so-called god's people of real believers who are God's people and those who think they are but are not. And so the word divides. And one of the criteria, one of the ways of discerning whether you are a child of God, do you obey his commands? Do you do what he says? If you say you love him and don't obey his commands, then you're lying, he says. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we're in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. So a very clear indication of a believer, live the life, walk as Jesus did. But are you seeking to live a godly life? If you're not, then it's indicative that you're not a child of God, a true child of God. Dear friends, I'm not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you've had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard. Yet I'm writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and you. Because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Now, he hasn't told us what the new command is, but we do know what it is. We know the great commandment is love the Lord your God and then love your neighbor as yourself. And the command here is going to go on and tell us what it is to love other believers with the love that Jesus has given us. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in the darkness. Now, obviously, this in indicates that the church to which or the churches to which John was writing had problems of division and he says you can't claim to be a Christian if you hate your brother and there's animosity and quarreling and division that's not a sign of the kingdom and if you've got bad blood with believers around that's a sign perhaps that you haven't come through to real faith whoever loves his brother lives in the light and there's nothing in him to make him stumble but whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. He does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded him. The criterion for 
knowing whether a person is a believer is one is obedience to God's command and secondly this love for others and it's a big thing Jesus said listen if you get love for God and love for others right you pretty much got the whole law and the prophets if if, if from your heart comes a capacity to love others that's a, a sign that the Holy Spirit has done a work in you if you can't love brothers and sisters and are always speaking negatively slandering them undermining them causing division it's a sign that the Holy Spirit hasn't done a real work in you put love right up at the top love God love others and you cover a multitude of sins basically two criteria so far do you obey my commands do you love others he goes on and he writes now what looks like either a song because it, it's got a, a repeated chorus but it's it's a word of encouragement and I'm not going to spend too long on it because it's self explanatory I write to you dear children because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name I write to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning I write to you young men because you've overcome the evil one I write to you dear children because you've known the father I write to you fathers because you've known him who's from the beginning that's a repeated line I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God lives in you and you've overcome the evil one so just encouragement saying I'm writing to you You've got it. You know the answers. Now obey my commands and love each other. And now the last section for today is a third criteria to see if a man or woman is a child of God. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not him. Now he's not talking about the created world, nature, the beauty of the stars, the sun, the sky, the sunset, all that God has made for us, the flowers, the fields. It's the sinful world. It's called in Scripture Babylon the harlot in the book of Revelation. It's, it's the wild life. It's the bright lights. Satan will attack us through persecution. He'll attack us through deception, but he'll attack us through uh, temptation. Watch the bright lights. Don't love the bright lights. Do you love God or is the bright lights your God? Someone said on a camp recently, follow a person's money, his time, his energy, and at the end of that road, you'll see a throne. What's on that throne? And if it's not Jesus, you've got a problem. So where does your love go to? And if it's not Jesus, you've got an idol. You've got someone else on the throne. You love the world, maybe. Maybe it's the party life, and you've got to watch that. And so John writes here and says, don't love the world. If you love the world, then you don't love God. So that's the third sign whether God has done a real work. Do you obey his commands? Do you love his people? And do you love him above the world? For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. So they're the signs, if you want to identify the world's cravings of sinful man. More, more power, lust, the lusts of his eyes, his boasting, his pride, his arrogance, all of those are not from God. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. You see, those things that we strive so hard for are going to pass away one day. We're going to stand before God empty-handed. Someone said there's no carriage on a hearse. You're in the coffin, you're going empty-handed. You don't take your belongings with you that you fought so hard for and striven so hard for. John says those are going to pass away. Love God. Walk in the light. Love his commands. Love his people. And keep an eye that the world doesn't entrap you. Take the precautions you need to do to resist the temptations of Satan. Flee from sin. Resist him and he will flee from you. Come, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we really pray. Would you confirm in our hearts that we are true children of God? Help us to obey your commands, love others, and resist the temptations of the world. We pray in your precious name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. I don't know.